Welcome back to Matt Presents Movie Nights. Last time it was Friday the 13th. We did a, a spooky, satanic triple feature. So uh, let's talk about those movies. Started with The Omen, the ever classic The Omen, uh, the definitive telling of the Antichrist story. I uh, Initially, I had this box set. The Omen Collection. This is like 10 bucks at uh, Best Buy. And I'm like, I'd pay 10 bucks for just The Omen by itself on Blu-ray. Of course I'll buy The Omen Collection on Blu-ray for 10 bucks. Um, it's got 1, 2, 3, and the remake. But not 4? Which I thought was weird, and I recognize 4 as a TV movie. And uh, considering the ending of 3... I feel like it'd be hard to follow up on The Omen 3. Um, still, I think it's odd that there's no Omen 4 on here. Um, there's a few bonus features for The Omen 1, but not really the other films. So, I had this. I've had this for a while. Probably a year or two. Mm, not two. Probably about a year. Maybe a little under. Then, like... Literally, like, a week before I was going to show The Omen, I found this at Walmart. The Scream Factory Omen Collection. Um, and it was... It's, like, 35 bucks for five movies. And, like, hell yeah, I'm going to take that. And it's, it's not just, like... Like, this is just a box of The Omen movies. This is, like... S nice special edition Blu-rays for all five movies. And it does, in fact, include The Omen 4, so... I look forward to watching that. I haven't watched The Omen 4. I have seen 2 and 3. 2 is not very good. 3 I might recommend in the future. <laughs> like... Can, can, I, can I recommend The Omen 3 without The Omen 2? Are people gonna get mad at me? The Omen 3 is so much better than The Omen 2. So yeah, I got... Obviously, I got the nicer Omen box set, so I'm probably going to sell this. I held on to it just to show off, just to, yeah, this is what I had, and this is what I have now. Um, so, if you want just, like, the Omen movies, and you're okay not having the Omen 4, um, and you just want it for cheap, this is 10 bucks. but, you know, if you got the money... Or, like, uh, a birthday, Christmas is coming up. If you know someone who would want The Omen, all five Omen movies, I recommend the Scream Factory box set. Um, not the only format I have The Omen on. I also have it on VHS, uh, which I'm very happy to have. I am a, a bit of a passive... VHS collector, like I'll go a place and if they're selling VHSs and they happen to have one I want, I'll buy it, but I won't seek out specific VHSs. And it's actually kind of hard to find like classic horror movies on VHS because horror movie fans and people who collect VHSs, it's, it's like a the, the Venn diagram is almost a circle there. So, all of, like, the Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, you're never gonna find them on VHS. Those are in some collector's collection. And I, I don't seek out specific VHSs. So I was happy to stumble across The Omen on VHS. The only time I will seek out a VHS is if the movie is only available on VHS. And to date, I think that's only been one movie. Uh, Ghosts Can't Do It, I, I sought out on VHS, because it's not available in any other format. So yeah, The Omen on VHS. I have it. Nice. I like it. But I also have it here on Blu-ray. 
The one problem I do have with the big box set that's just, like, five Blu-rays is... It takes up a lot of shelf space. You can see, like, the big fucking gap here where the Omen box set goes. Like... What's the point of having a box set if it's going to take up the same amount of shelf space as five Blu-rays? The point of a box set is to take up less shelf space. Anyways, now that I've spent five minutes talking about the various formats I have the Omen on, let's actually talk about the fucking movie. This is the movie, right? Okay. Because um, the remake is also in there. I've never seen the remake either. The Omen is the classic story of... Uh, the, the American, uh, shit, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Ambassador, the American ambassador to Britain, uh, he's just given birth to a child. Actually, the child's like three when the movie starts, like, the, the child's fairly old. He is still like a toddler, but it's, it's not right after he was born. But the American ambassador to Britain and his child and uh, on his child's like third birthday, weird things start happening around the child and um, there's like a priest who's trying to convince him that his son is the Antichrist, the devil's child and... Uh, and and his son will stop at nothing to cover up the fact that he is the antichrist creepy stuff it's it's the antichrist movie like the the modern idea of the antichrist is inspired so much by the omen like you talk about the antichrist and this is where people's brains go not, not like the Bible, where, where the Antichrist originates. Nah, it's the omen. This is what people think of. I mean, I love this movie to bits, but I don't know how much I can even say about it. Because it's the omen. <laughs> like, first off, who hasn't seen the omen? If, you're, if you like horror movies, if you're into horror watch The Omen. And even if you're not into horror movies, this is, I think, one of the better horror movies for, like, non-horror fans. It's it's not particularly uh, graphic. Um, there, there's not a lot of, you know, like, blood and guts and stuff. Um, it's, it's pretty tame, all things considered. Um, but it is very creepy. It's a very creepy film. Um, and... It's a hell of a lot of fun, like, I, I, I kind of don't like it when people are talking about, like, oh, what's, what's, like, your favorite grindhouse exploitation film, and they'll say something like Alien or Friday the 13th, and I'm like, that's not exploitation, those, those are mainstream movies. But there's kind of an exploitation edge to The Omen. Like, if you said The Omen was your favorite exploitation film, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> um, I did notice on a rewatch, it's the, the beginning. The beginning is a tad slower than I remember the first time watching it. Um... Like, it, it takes a while to get to, his, like, his third birthday. Because that's when, like, shit goes off the rails. Like, his his nanny kills herself. Spoilers, I guess. That's I mean, it's in the trailer, but also... I f feel like that's a pretty major moment in the movie. Um, his, his nanny kills herself, like, as, as sacrifice to the Antichrist... And from there, crazy shit. There is a very Rosemary's Baby vibe to this. I, I kind of wonder if this would have gotten made if Rosemary's Baby didn't exist. Because there, there is a very similar, like, who's in on this and who isn't. Because there are people, like, in... in 
Damien's life that are, like, part of the, the Antichrist cult. There is one scene in this movie I find really, really funny. Because, uh, um, the, the main character, Gregory Peck... Uh, big props to Gregory Peck for appearing in this movie. Like, big name actors just didn't do horror movies in, like, the 70s and 80s. Like, horror was looked down upon for a very long time. So, props to Gregory Peck for being in this. Um, but his his wife is pregnant, and, like, this priest has told him, like, Oh, it says in the prophecy that, like, her baby won't survive. Damien will stop at nothing to kill it. So, uh... And then his wife, like, falls down a flight of stairs, and he, so Gregory Peck has to go to the hospital, and, and he shows up, and the doctor, he's talking to the doctor, and the doctor's like, oh, she's got a lot of internal bleeding, and blah, 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 and he's like, doctor, she's pregnant, and the doctor just looks at him and goes, no. Not, oh, I'm sorry, sir, the, the child has died, you're, 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 the the fall killed the unborn child. No, no, just no. <laughs> what type of bedside manner is that? <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> oh, she's pregnant. Nope. Nope. Nah. No. <laughs> it's funny. It's fair. There. That's the thing. There's like I talk about how creepy this movie is. But there is a layer of cheese to it. Like, it is... It is not without its cheesy moments. Which I think makes it better, in my opinion. Like, it... It it never gets... Too serious. You know, there's those cheesy moments to sort of break it up and keep it fun. I don't know, it's The Omen. It's a classic for a very good reason. I love it to bits. Um... And I specifically decided to start with The Omen because the other two films I recommended, it was, it's Satan's Slave and Lucifer's Women. And those are just movies that sound like they go together, right? You gotta watch Satan's Slave and Lucifer's Women together, especially because they're both Vinegar Syndrome releases. Um, those are just, that's, that's a good pairing. But I'm like, I've never seen these movies. There's a very strong possibility these movies won't be very good. So I'm gonna recommend The Omen, just so it's like, okay, these two movies sucked, but The Omen, The Omen is great. Like, just, just counterbalance here. You gotta have the classics so you can show the garbage. Plus, I mean, I just need to show the classics more. I keep showing these weird-ass fucking obscure movies, and it's like... <sighs> I should recommend more more of the classics, you know? Not gonna happen this week. Three movies I'm recommending this week are not classics at all, but... <laughs> Here we are. So, after that, we watched Satan's Slave. I have reversed the cover from last time. You may remember last time I, I showed the cover that, like... There was, like, a half-naked woman. Actually, no, this is this is a fully naked woman. She's just, like, barely got her tits covered. So I'm like, uh, what's the reversible cover? And the reversible cover... Lot less, um... Lot less revealing there. Satan's Slave is a, uh, British horror movie. And... <laughs> Actually, despite having a mostly naked woman on the cover, it's pretty tame in terms of, like, sexual content. Like, one person gets naked in the movie, I think. Yeah, like, like one, only one or two people get naked in this movie. So, I don't know why that is. Um, it's a, a British horror movie. This girl, um, this girl's going out with her mother and father to visit... Her aunt and uncle out in the country, but right as they're getting to the house, the car s 
swerves off the road and hits a tree. And so the girl is like, hey, I'm, I'll go run to the house for help. And as she's running to the house for help, the car explodes and her parents die. And so she just has to live with her aunt and her uncle after the death of her parents. And... Uh, and then it turns out that her uncle is a Satanist, and there's a, a cult that wants her for Satan. Um, I guess they want her to be part of the cult. There's not really a suggestion that they want to, uh, kill her or anything, like sacrifice her. They want her to become a Satanist with them. Because apparently, like, her great-great ancestor was... One of the witches burned during the witch hunts. Which, uh, this is not the only film with that premise. There's also, uh, Daughters of Satan, which has... Oh, fuck. Magnum P.I. What's that good? Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck in Daughters of Satan. Um, which is also about... A woman whose, like, great-great ancestor was killed during the witch hunts. And now she is becoming the witch. I don't know, it's... Uh, an interesting movie, to say the least. I mean, I'm biased. I'm very biased here. I love 70s horror, I love British horror, and I love satanic horror. So I'm very biased here, like... These tick all the boxes, th this ticks all the boxes for me, and even I'm like, eh, it's not the best thing I've ever seen, so to a more mainstream audience, perhaps this would not play as well, but to me, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun watching this movie. Um, <laughs> just, it's, it's the type of film I want to see. It's satanic 70s horror. And it's from Britain, which is just a nice bonus. The British do good horror movies. Although they do tend to be pretty tame horror movies. Because Britain had very strict censorship laws. In fact, this is the uncut version, according to the back of the box here. It's fully uncut, uncensored, worldwide Blu-ray debut. So, uh, thanks for that, Vinegar Syndrome. I, I think it was only like a minute or two of footage that I think was cut. I'm pretty sure. Don't hold me to that. Film stars Michael Goh, who famously played Alfred in all four of the original Batman movies. He's the only actor to appear in all four movies. He's in Batman, uh, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Every other character gets recast or just doesn't show up again. But Michael Goh plays Alfred in all four movies. Um... He's also in one of my favorite movies, hilariously underrated film, uh, Top Secret, from the directors of Airplane. That, that's a movie that should definitely be recommended in the future. I love Top Secret, it is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, as is Airplane, I love Airplane, but I might like Top Secret more. It's been a while since I've seen either. But I might like Top Secret more. What else? What else can I say about Satan's Slave? I love the title. Satan's Slave. That is such a hard fucking title. That's, that's fucking raw, man. <laughs> Satan's Slave? Hell yeah, I'm in. It, it was the title that sold me. I'm like, oh man, Satan's Slave? I gotta watch that. Um, it's not even the only movie called Satan's Slave. There's another one from 1980 that's like a Filipino film, I think. Filipino movie. That recently got remade for Shudder. This is from 76. I, I think I said it was an American movie last time. That's wrong. It's British. Wild, interesting movie. If you're into the type of things I am into... You will like Satan's Slave. If you are a normal person, probably not. And then we ended with Lucifer's Women. A film from 1974 that has considerably more nudity in it than Satan's Slave. So, 
the this film's claim to fame is that it is one of the handful of movies that Church of Satan founder Anton LaVey was involved in the production of. He was like a like like a creative consultant, I think. Um which the if if you keep up with Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show, you'll know he was also a consult a creative consultant on Devil's Reign. Link to that there. Devil's Reign is like my least popular review for reasons I cannot figure out. Because the video it it like it sets up the little Nikki review, and the little Nikki review is extremely popular. And it's like you guys are just going into the little Nikki review with no context. Being a YouTuber is weird. I have the algorithm is bullshit. It makes no sense. You will never understand what why some videos get views and others don't. Sometimes, sometimes you'll be able to look at a video and be like, "Yeah, okay, I, I know why that one's not that popular." But sometimes just a video won't be popular, or sometimes a video will be popular, and you're like, why? Why this one? Why this one of all of my videos? Lucifer's Women, Anton LaVey, Church of Satan. Fuck. It's the, the story of these uh, two girls, these two strippers, actually. These two strippers who start a romantic relationship, and one of them's getting involved with this magician who claims to be the reincarnate of Svengali, the famous fictional magician. Uh, for from I mean, he was in a book series. He originated in a book series, but uh, his famously the nineteen thirty six film. Svengali, where he is played by, mm, fuck, John Barrymore, Drew Barrymore's father, John Barrymore, it's John, right? What's Drew Barrymore's grandfather's name? Fuck me. Yes, I was right, it was John Barrymore, haha. -ha. I knew it was one of the Barrymores, I just couldn't remember what his first name was. Svengali, 19th, oh, it was 1931, not 1936, my bad. But that's his most famous appearance. Um, but he did originate from a series of books, and they do reference the books in this movie. Which is weird, because if he's the reincarnate of Svengali, then Svengali is a real person. Why would the books exist in this universe? I don't know. Sort of a weird sequel to Svengali. Weird unofficial sequel to Svengali. Um, but then, of course, the guy who says he's the reincarnate of Svengali finds out that he's actually this completely other person and he's just been possessed by Svengali. And so he has to use, like, astral projection to get Svengali out of his body. Um, it gets weird. It gets really fucking trippy in a couple scenes. Um, so again, right up my alley, absolutely the stuff I love. It's satanic horror, and it's trippy as fuck. There's actually an alternate cut of the film, which is available here on the, uh, Vinegar Syndrome release, titled Dr. Dracula, which is a weird title because no one in this movie is a vampire. It's Dr. Dracula, it's a re-edited version of Lucifer's Women, and it's supposedly way trippier. I intended to watch it before I made this video, and I completely forgot. So, I, I'll probably watch it tonight. Uh, Future Matt, how was Dr. Dracula? Right, Dr. Dracula. Um, I don't know why I was under the impression it was going to be more surreal than Lucifer's Women. Uh, it ended up being much, much less surreal, um, in a way that kind of made me appreciate Lucifer's Women a little more. This is sort of a, like a Godfrey Ho style, or perhaps like a, 
a Godzilla King of the Monsters, if you're looking for a reference normal people would know. Like a re-edit of Lucifer's Women where uh, they they filmed extra scenes and stuck them in the movie to sort of make it more appealing to audiences. Um, directed by Al Adamson, who is a very interesting director. We'll have to talk about him sometime. Uh, there's like a, a documentary about him on Shudder, so... Interesting person, interesting guy, Al Adamson. They get him in, and they brought in um, John Carradine to appear in this. I said last week that John Carradine was going to be in Lucifer's Women. Uh, I was wrong about that. He is not in Lucifer's Women, and I didn't even notice he wasn't in Lucifer's Women until I watched Dr. Dracula, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, that's John Carradine. John Carradine wasn't in Lucifer's Women, was he? He wasn't. They They filmed a bunch of scenes with... John Carradine, and then stuck them into what they had already filmed of Lucifer's Women, um, which was not directed by Al Adamson, it was directed by someone else. Um, but uh, unlike, like, Godfrey Ho movies and, and Godzilla King of the Monsters, those had, like, extra scenes filmed and stuck in uh, to to adapt a foreign film for an American audience. This was an American film being adapted back for an American audience. I, I have to assume this was, like, a, a studio thing, like, Lucifer's Women fucking bombed, and they're like, great, what do we do with this movie? Oh, let's call up Al Adamson, he works for cheap. And, uh, who else can we get in this movie? Oh, I know, John Carradine. Throw John Carradine in there. And... They they cut out all of the weird, trippy shit. They cut out all of the lesbian stuff. One of the two lesbians doesn't even appear in the movie. Um, and the other one has a severely reduced role. She was, like, the main character of Lucifer's Women, and now she's, like, barely in the movie. So, they cut out the two things I really liked. Uh, the, the weird, surreal stuff and the gay shit. So... What you're left with is a very boring, very bog-standard satanic horror movie from the 70s, which I'm sure tested better with audiences. I'm sure Dr. Dracula played a little better than Lucifer's Women, but to me, Lucifer's Women is the much more interesting movie because it's so much weirder and so much unlike anything I've ever seen, which I can't say about Dr. Dracula. It's very boring, very standard. Uh, it's called Dr. Dracula because the Spingali character is a vampire in, like, three scenes. There's, like, two or three scenes where he sucks a woman's blood, and that's it. It doesn't really get brought up again. Um, like, this whole new subplot... It makes everything feel so inconsequential. Because there's very little of Lucifer's women left. So what little they show of Lucifer's women feels inconsequential because it never gets enough room to breathe. And the new stuff feels inconsequential because it never gets paid off because they're using a movie that already existed that didn't pay off the stuff they're trying to set up. Just a, a boring movie all around. They did get the actor who played Svengali back. Uh, for it seemed like they got him back for like one day of filming because there's just like there's like two scenes of him on set with uh, uh, John Carradine. Because in the scenes where he's a vampire, it's clearly not him. It's clearly someone else. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Doctor Dracula, not good. Prefer Lucifer's Women. Wow, that's very interesting. Thank you for adding that, future Matt. So, I mean, it's not totally psychedelic. There, There is pretty normal stuff to it. But it does, it does very, it has, a uh, Wizard of Gore vibes, you know? Like, the Svengali character kind of looks like the guy from, uh, Wizard of Gore. <laughs> and, and just the things he does are so weird. That it's like, 
There's there's even a scene where he saws a woman in half, and then he just like actually saws her in half. He does, it's not magic. He just kills her by sawing her in half. So, yeah, very Wizard of Gore vibes from this. If you want to do a, a good triple, a good double feature, uh, Lucifer's Women and Wizard of Gore work together very well. It, it, uh, it, uh, kind of implies that, uh, Satan will make you gay? Question mark? Because, like, as these two strippers are, like, getting involved in the occult and whatnot, uh, they, uh, they start making out with each other, they start having sex with each other, they, they start a, a lesbian relationship. That's what happens. They become lesbians because they're involved in the occult. But this isn't, like, played as, like, a negative, even. It's not, like... Odds, oh, shame on you, you get involved in Satan, you're gonna be gay. It's like, hey man, uh, you, gotta, you wanna be gay? Just uh, join the occult, it's cool. We're cool with that. Film does not do a good job differentiating between the occult and Satanism, which is weird because <laughs> Anton LaVey is attached to this. If anyone should know the difference, it's fucking Anton LaVey. I don't know, man. <laughs> Lucifer's women, weird as shit. I like it. Gay shit happens. Um, weird, satanic, gay. That's, that's me. That's, that's my, uh, that's very much my bag. Again, Lucifer's women. If you're like, if you like the stuff I like, you'll enjoy it. If you're a normal person, you will not. So, last week, I forgot to add the question i in fact i uploaded a version of that video to patreon without the question i i woke up day of and was like oh fuck i didn't i didn't ask a question for that video i forgot the question was an obvious one it's what what's your favorite satanic movie um i got to say it's a bit of a hard call for me. I, I love The Omen, and I love, um, Rosemary's Baby. It, it'd be close between those two. Having just watched The Omen, I'm leaning Rosemary's Baby, because, um, uh, is Rosemary's Baby in Reach? No, it's not. It's like, it's like just out of Reach. Fuck it. Not worth it. Uh, <laughs> Rosemary's Baby. Um, very creepy. Very ahead of its time, really. Like it, You look at the other horror films that were coming out around Rosemary's Baby, and Rosemary's Baby is just like so much smarter, so much more grounded. So I, th I think I'm going to say Rosemary's Baby... But The Omen is a very close second. And I know what everyone's thinking. Oh, what about The Exorcist? I love The Exorcist. It's a great movie. I don't love it as much as The Omen. Or as much as Rosemary's Baby. However, I will say... I was very broad when I said... Favorite satanic movie. Um, because... You can kind of stretch the definition of satanic to include some occultic movies. So for including occultic movies, it's Evil Dead 2 hands down. Like, it's not even close. It's Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2 is the best occultic movie ever made. I love Evil Dead 2 so much. The, the only answer I got was from uh, Nuno. Thank you, Nuno, for answering so frequently. Uh, and he, he says, uh, since, since I was talking about an international films, he, rec he is, answer was, this night I'll possess your corpse, the, uh, Coffin Joe film from, from the Coffin Joe series. Um, I have good news for you, Nuno. I have, oh man, get out of my way, snake. The Coffin Joe trilogy, I just bought this like a week or two ago 
Shit, I think he got the title wrong, actually. Okay, no, he said, this night I'll possess your corpse. I might have just said, this night I'll possess your soul. Uh, so I might have said it wrong. But, uh, yeah, this night I'll possess your corpse is actually the second movie in the Coffin Joe series. So, Coffin Joe trilogy. I will probably be recommending this in the future, all three of them. Although, it's weird that it's called the trilogy, because I'm pretty sure there's like four or five other... Coffin Joe movies that aren't in this set. It's, uh, it's At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul, This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse, and Embodiment of Evil are the three I've got in here, but I'm pretty sure there are more Coffin Joe movies. While I'm recording my thoughts on Dr. Dracula, I'm going to add, um, Lino's answer today. Lino posted a little late. I had already filmed the new video. But, lucky for him, I was already filming this follow-up, so we can discuss his answer. So, uh, Lino says, uh, late to the party, put me down for the bad news tour and more bad news. Two comic strip presents TV movies from the 80s in the UK. Uh, this is obviously an answer to my last, last question about, uh, favorite metal movies. So, yes, you're late to the party on that one, Lino. Um, I haven't seen either of the Bad News move, Bad News Tour movies. I know it's the people who worked on The Young Ones, or at least some of the people who worked on The Young Ones, and I, I love the fucking Young Ones, but, uh, it's just not really easily available in America, neither of them are. And I say that, it's probably on, like, YouTube or Daily Motion, but as far as, like, streaming, it's not on any streaming platforms, so... I I haven't looked that hard, but just offhand, it's not super easy to get into it to, to get here in America. Um, as for satanic movies, he says, uh, "Race with the Devil." Satan worshippers count, right? Yes, Satan worshippers absolutely count. I will count "Race with the Devil." Uh, good pick. I like that movie. Um, it's not not the greatest, but it's definitely an interesting pick. Uh, might might be worth showing some night. I have it on a double bill with like Dirty Dirty Mary Crazy Larry. Um Peter Fonda racing a, a bunch of uh Satanists. There's not a lot of satanic action movies. Very very few. There's I mean Race with the Devil and Drive Angry. I think Drive Angry is uh inspired by Race with the Devil. I love Drive Angry. <laughs> So I, I guess I'm thankful to uh, Race with the Devil for inspiring that. Other than that, there's like End of Days with Schwarzenegger, which is lame, and like Hellbound with Chuck Norris, which is also lame. So Race with the Devil might be the best satanic action movie behind Drive Angry. So this week my question for you is uh, what is your favorite holiday movie that is not based around Christmas or Halloween. Any, any holiday except those two. Because, uh, tonight we're gonna do a Thanksgiving triple feature, since it is, this is going up the day after Thanksgiving, actually. Um, but that's fine by me. <laughs> it's the day after Thanksgiving, but you know, whatever. We're gonna do a Thanksgiving triple feature, and a Thanksgiving... Horror triple feature, because I'm pretty sure there's more Thanksgiving horror than there is Thanksgiving not horror. So we're going to start with Blood Rage. Classic uh, slasher movie right here. To the point the original title was like, I, I think it was just called Slasher. Yes, it, it says it here on the back. The original title, just Slasher. Although anywhere you're going to find it, it's going to be called Blood Rage. So... Blood Rage. And then, against my better judgment, we're gonna watch the Thanks Killing movies. Um, Thanks Killing and Thanks Killing 3. Not Thanks Killing 2. There's no Thanks Killing 2. Don't try to watch Thanks Killing 2. It doesn't exist. And that's not. 
that's not like when I play like, oh, the, 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 the Matrix sequels don't exist. I mean, literally, there is not a thanks killing 2. They jumped right to 3. And there's a story reason they jumped right to 3. I, I always say, like, oh, I'm gonna regret this, and I, I usually don't. But I feel like thanks killing is where I'm gonna... I, I am actually going to regret recommending thanks killing in its sequel. But... We're gonna do it, because, I mean, I don't want to do an episode of Matt's Funtime Bad Movie Show on them. So at the very least, if you wanted to hear me talk about Thanks Killing, now you'll have that. Now I'll be doing that. So happy Thanksgiving. I know it was yesterday, but happy Thanksgiving. Jesus Christ, it's fucking November, but look at my fucking tan lines. It's November, why do I still have the fucking tan? It's it's not as... It's, it's showing up in the camera, like, really bad. It's not as bad in real life. Why am I talking about this? This has nothing to do with the omen. I'll put this at the end of the video. Fuck it. <laughs> look at that. It's it's so much worse in the camera but it's it's like noticeable in real life. <laughs>